Sarah, do you have disagreements with Lee on the number of aliens that are out there? So and I do actually, yeah. Well, and what they look like. So any of the things we've been talking about is there um, nuanced. Oh, it's always nice to discover uh, wisdom through nuanced disagreement. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't wholly disagree, but I think. Um, but I do think I disagree. It's kind of it, there's nuance there. Um, but but Lee you can made disagree. The, no, it's fine. Um, I it it is nuanced, right? So you made the point earlier that you think, um, you know, once we discover what alien life, what life is, we'll see alien life everywhere. Um, and I think I agree on some levels in the sense that I think the physics that governs us is universal. But I I don't know how far I would go to say to say that we're a likely phenomena because we don't understand all of the features of the transition at the origin of life, which we, which we would just say in assembly is you go from uh, the no memory physics to uh, a, there's like a, a critical transition around the assembly index where assemblyness starts to increase. And that's what we call the evolution of the biosphere and complexification of the biosphere. Um, so there's a principle of increasing assemblyness, or that goes back to what I was saying at the very beginning about the physics of the possible, that the universe basically gets in this mode of trying to make as much possibilities as possible. Um, now, how often that transition happens, ver that you get the kind of cascading effect that we get in our biosphere, I think we don't know. If we did, we would know the likelihood of life in the universe. And a lot of people want to say life is common, but I don't think that we can say that yet until we have the empirical data, which I think you would agree with. But then there's this other kind of uh, thought experiment I have, which I, I don't like, um, but I did have it, um, which is... Um, you know, if life emerges on one planet and you get this real high density of things that can exist on that planet, is it sort of dominating the density of creation that the universe can actually generate? So like if you're thinking about counting entropy, right, like the universe has a certain amount of stuff in it. And then, you know, assembly is kind of like an entropic principle. It's not entropy. But the idea is that now transformations among stuff or the actual physical histories of things now become things that you have to count as far as saying that these things exist and we're increasing the number of things that exist. And uh, and if you think about that cosmologically, maybe Earth is sucking up all the life potential of the whole universe. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I have How's that? Can, can you explain mm. that a little bit? Why, why can any one geographical region suck up the well, creative capacity of the universe? Um, just like... No. I I know it's a ridiculous thought. I don't I don't actually agree with it, but it was just a thought experiment. I love that you can have thoughts that you don't like and don't agree with, but you have to think through them anyway. Yeah. Those are, I, I <laughs> the human I, mind is fascinating. Yeah. I, I think these sort of um, <laughs> like counterfactual thought experiments are really good when you're trying to build new theories because yeah. you have to think through all the consequences. And there, there are people that want to try to account for say, the degrees of freedom on our planet in cosmological inventories of, you know, talking about the entropy of the universe and, you know, and when we're thinking about, like, cosmological arrow of time and things like that. Now, I think those are pretty superficial proposals as they stand now, but assembly would give you a way of counting it. And then the question is, if there's a certain maximal capacity of the universe's speed of generating stuff, which Lee always has this argument that assembly is about time, the universe is generating more states. Really what it's generating is more assembly possibilities. And then dark energy might be one manifestation of that, that the universe is accelerating its expansion because that makes more physical space. And what's happening on our planet is it's accelerating in the expansion of possible things that exist. And maybe the universe just has a maximal rate of what it can do to generate things. And then if, if there is a maximal rate, maybe only a certain number of planets can actually do that. Or there's a trade-off about the pace of growth on certain planets versus others. I have a million questions there, but do you have do you have thoughts on? Yeah, just a said? quick. Yeah, I'll just say something very it's quick. It's a thought experiment. No, no, it's good. I think I get it. Yeah. I think I get it. So, um, all I want to say is, when I mean aliens are everywhere, I mean m memories are the prerequisite for aliens via selection and then concentration of selection when selection becomes autonomous. So what I would love to do is to build, say, a magical telescope that was a memory... Magical. A magical one. <laughs> yeah, sorry, or a real one. That would yeah. be a memory detector to see selection. Mm -hmm. So you could, you could get to exoplanets and say, that exoplanet looks like there's lots of selection going on there. Maybe there's evolution and maybe there's going to be life. So what I'm just trying to say is narrow down the regions of space where you say there's definitely evidence of memory as high assembly there or not the high assembly because that would be life, but of select the, 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 where where it's capable of happening, mm -hmm. and then we then that would also help us frame the search for aliens. I don't know how likely it is to make the transition to cells and all the other things. I think you're right, but I think that it's 
Yeah. We, we just need to get more data. Well, I didn't like the thought experiment because I don't like the idea that if the universe has a maximal limit on the amount it can generate per unit time, that our existence is actually precluding the existence well, of other things. Well, I'll just say one thing. But I think that's probably true anyway because of the resource limitations. So I don't, I don't like your thought experiment because I think it's wrong. Because, well, no, no, no. I do like the thought experiment. So what you're trying to say is like there is a chain of events that goes back that's manifestly cul culminated with life on Earth. Mm -hmm. And you're not saying that life isn't possible elsewhere. You say that there has been these number of things, contingent things that have happened that have allowed life to emerge here. Um, that doesn't mean that life can't emerge elsewhere, but you're saying that these the intersection of events may have may be concentrated here, right? Um, uh, and I think that's not exact. Not exactly. It's more like um, like uh, you know, if you you look at say the causal graphs are fundamental, maybe space is an emergent property, which is consistent with some proposals in quantum gravity, but also how we talk about things in assembly theory, then the universe is causal graphs generating more structure in causal graphs, right? So this is how the universe is unfolding. And maybe there's a cap on the rate of generation, like the, there's only so much stuff that gets made per update of the universe. And then if there's a lot of stuff being made in a particular region that happens to look the same locally, spatially, that's an after effect of the fact that the whole causal graph is updating.